I don't know if I made this video before, but I guess I'll just do another one just for the hell of it. But, you know, I hate when I listen to, like, Crystal and Kara's and, and, like, swirlers and even conscious women, but, like, swirlers who, like, they've adopted, like, conscious, like, uh, conscious, um, you know, uh, terms and words and phrases and shit, like, building, and then they, like, they, like, reapply it to be, like, oh, well, you know, that's why y'all niggas ain't building, and that's why y'all niggas don't have a patriarchy and all this shit. I'm like, you know, like, the thing is with that is, is that nobody told black boys to, to build. You know, nobody was in the, you know, nobody, nobody was telling us to do, to do whatever. Nobody was telling us that like, hey, you know, th this, this business, you know, this Korean business over here needs to be boycotted and taken down by, and, and replaced by a black owned business that does the same thing. And, you know, it's like, that's why to a degree I do hate when Chrissy kind of like shits on black men a little bit about like what niggas ain't on. And like, you know, we're not, you know, building or we're not, um, you know, doing this and that. And I'm like, you know, dudes are like learning this, these terms from the internet. You know, dudes are like black men are learning like what to do or what they should do from the internet. Like if it wasn't for the internet, like I wouldn't even know what these terms mean. I wouldn't know that, oh, like, hey, we need a patriarchy or hey, um, we need to be building something and generational wealth and all this shit. You know, I, I wouldn't even know anything about it. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. And, you know, a lot, a lot of these females, they, you know, they, they, they you know, they, they charge us in the game, you know, too freaking early. You know, they'd be like, you know, and that's why y'all niggas are broke and y'all niggas don't have the plans and blueprints. And I'm like, you know, these boys were fathered or invisibly fathered or absently fathered by men who weren't even worth a damn. And now you're, you're charging these boys to the game of, yeah, and y'all niggas should have had a business by now. I'm like, like, where is the resources? Where, where were the, you know, these, where was anybody telling us that, 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 that all these problems need to be fixed? You know, no, nobody, nobody told us shit. You know, you ask the average black boy, you know, if his parents taught him about building, they might have like a somewhat answer, but it's like, it wasn't concrete. Like nobody told them to like create a business and be like, yeah, you know, in something like, like you, since you're five years old, we, we you need to be thinking about having your own business and making your own money. It was like, we were just hit with, you know, be a good worker, be, you know, all that shit. And then, you know, people, you know, were talking about, you know, getting their own money, but it wasn't concrete. It wasn't in the terms of black empowerment or black economics. It was just at best individualism. Make good money for yourself and, that, and for you only. You know, women are talking about, and I, I can't even take these women too seriously, you know, talking about they want patriarchy and it's like do, do you see the black women who are into feminism and shit I mean granted it's not like a large amount or they're like they're hardcore but I'm like it's not a popular thing you know people already drink the Kool-Aid of you know liberal progressivism and you know all of a sudden you know like male leadership is obsolete niggas didn't even get the chance to be leaders but you know it's like like black women are constantly putting themselves in the position to be leaders and they're they're promoted as that. 
you know, I, I was like, I was kind of like thinking of this contradiction with uh, when I was watching the Carmichael show. I, I, and, you know, it was funny because I, I never really watched a Carmichael show like that. I might have seen like one episode or I see my mom watch it uh, a couple years ago or whatever. And there was this episode where they were talking about guns. And so uh, the, 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 the main character, the young man, you know, he's dating this light-skinned chick, and it's, 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 it's so, cut. like, I even caught on to the colorism, you know, it's like the typical, the, the black chick, the dark-skinned chick is the ghetto one, uh, and then, like, the light-skinned chick is this, like, suburban girl who, you know, this suburban girl who is in love with black culture, but, you know, she learns it from a book. <laughs> You know, it's, it's like, and I, you know, maybe I have to watch the show some more. But it's like, they, 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 they seem to have like a limited interactions with black people. Um, but anyways, I'm I'm watching the Carl Baker show about guns, and it's basically like you know, black men versus black women. And so, like, the young dude, he, his girlfriend discovers that there's a gun in the sock drawer, and she's all worried about it, and she plans to leave him if the, if the gun isn't thrown away. And so she takes the gun to his parents' house, and the, the dad's like, oh, you know, that, that's the gun I gave my, my son. And, like, I got a gun, too. And it's like, you know, the dad's wife is upset and she's mad that there's a gun in the house and like that and, and the, the episode make like black gun owners look stupid as shit like they, they like they're just like niggas like niggas with a gun and they're just flashing it you know not even you know putting shit in the safety or taking out the bullets i'm like they would they just portrayed it as like some of the goofiest shit and i'm like black gun owners ain't that damn stupid i'm like Y'all just had this nigga waving the guns around, and it's like, I, I wouldn't even be that stupid, you know, <laughs> in real life. I don't even know what black gun owner is that stupid who legally has a gun. I don't know who's that damn stupid. I can see, like, a 12-year-old being that stupid with a gun, but, like, a grown-ass man? Like, nah, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. And what, what got me about this episode was that, like, this... The, the young man's girlfriend seems like this feminist type and it's like she values human life and then she's talking about like if somebody breaks in the house you let them and you you bargain with them and you know let them be because of circ economic circumstances and it's not fair out i'm like like what, what the fuck are you talking about like like not fair or what shit or circumstances i'm like it's, it's life and death, man. You, you like, man. You can watch first forty eight, or or just watch the local news, man. These niggas ain't taking, and it's not even just niggas. It's just people in general. But I'm just saying in general, since we're black, you know, we're dealing with mostly black people. You know, these dudes when they then they break in your house and they know that you're dead, man. They're not taking prisoners, man. Like nine times out of ten, you're going to die. Like they will kill you if if you if you just sit there and do nothing. Because they they rather be walking around free for like an extra two weeks versus going to jail immediately. <laughs> you know, like fuck. Like and like I was thinking about this episode, I'm like these black women are talking about they don't want guns in the household, but it's like you know, granted I can't see this as a real life, but then again, I do under because I, you know, I I do understand like the fear that black women have with guns because they they've lost their sons with, by gun violence they lost relatives and they they seen the the, the carnage and the, the the mothers losing their sons and everybody's crying and and wondering how the hell did this happen how the hell did you know Jamal get a gun and you know why would he kill you know this kid you know off of something stupid. We, I, I, I get it, but I'm like, man, you, you guys can't be contradicting the message because, like, for instance, if we just roll with it and be like, yeah, okay, niggas just gave away their guns, or, you know, the abiding citizens or the good black men just gave up their guns, it's like, people would be complaining, like, the next complaint would be, 
oh, well, y'all black men aren't protecting ourselves. And I'm like, they can't protect themselves or protect you since, you know, they gave away their gun. Like, how the hell, what, what do you expect them to do when, you know, somebody, you know, sticks them up and says, break your shit? What, like, what, what are they going to do, bargain for their life? Yeah, <sighs> gosh. You know, and I, I say this is kind of like the problem. And I, and that that episode was so stupid to me because I'm like, I'm wondering like, why is he letting this girl run his life? And I'm talking about the young dude. You know, he's letting this girl run his life, talking about there's no leader in a relationship and we're partners and we're equal and all this shit. I'm like, I don't give a damn how cute or light skin that chick is, man. <laughs> If she's that stupid, if there's women that are that stupid, I'm not going to be with them. You know, shit, niggas and motherfuckers are running around ready to, to test your manhood. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to let that go. Because, you know, bitches feeling uncomfortable. Shit. That episode just hurt me, but I, I feel like black dudes, we, you know, that's why I don't really like listening to a lot of these, like, female YouTubers who just kind of run their mouth, talking nonsense and acting like, why the hell isn't uh, Wakanda built yet? I'm <laughs> like, these kids weren't raised, you know, they were they, 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 like, they, Nobody was raised to be that way. Nobody was raised to be thinking about nation building and, you know, doing all this stuff with the black perspective or collective, I should say. Nobody was thinking that. That's why I had to check my friend, my female friend, when she was talking about, um, you know, when she was kind of on a, you know, bashing black men tip about, you know, they're not building. I'm like, who raised them? You, you, you think auntie... Grandma and and, and 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 Mama were, t- were telling her son about building and about Marcus Garvey and Black economics and you know he has a Claude Anderson book and, and Powernomics in every Black household. Like, get out of there with that dumb shit, man. You you, you know what niggas are on in the Black community. <laughs> That's why sometimes I have to step away from YouTube because niggas kind of get in La La Land and shit. It's like, if, do, if you know, black men want to do something, but the problem is like, yeah, we don't have the resources and we learn the information late. <laughs> you know, and like, even when you learn the information late, you're, you're kind of in like a contradicting, or you, you're, you're putting this in the, in the vine to where it's, it's like, is it worth it? You know, is it worth trying to build black people up in such a, like, a late time in the game? And that's why, you know, people just end up being individuals and, and you know, people just race hustle, um, you know, black folks. You know, like, you know, maybe like Tariq Nasheed and, you know, Dr. Umar Johnson. You know, you think as much as Tariq Nasheed talks about fucking black economics and how much he loves Claude Anderson, I mean, like, that nigga ain't trying to build up your business. He's just trying to get people to buy his shit, work for him for free, and it's black economics if you if you only buy from his shit. But he will never buy from you, or you know you you know you know he's not going to help you out. And I'll probably say, this, and to a degree, that analogy applies more to Jason Black than Tariq Nasheed. At least he's done a little bit of stuff to help black folks out. But I'm just saying, like, like with Jason Black, you know, he's this businessman. But it's like, nigga, we can't even find your business online. Like, like how is that good marketing? Like, it, it, makes, it makes zero sense. But, you know, that, that, that's my video. I didn't really have much.